Uh, Monroe Live video viewers, we have here our uh, press vehicle, the Ionic 6, 2023 Ionic 6 Limited, that we're going to give a quick review to basically the styling and the trim, mostly interior. Um, and we're starting with the, the hood open, so you can see the frunk right here. It's um, got a very, very tiny little frunk in there. And uh, we just did some kind of sides where a couple of the guys threw their shoes in here and we've noted that this is barely a three shoe frunk and the glove box can fit an entire one shoe in it and close so just for size comparison kind of odd um, but anyway it's it's nice and clean in here and like the ionic 5 they've kept with the the pixelation styling matter of fact they've even added i think more to this vehicle They've got the, the LED pixels. They've got the, the image of the pixels down there. The pixelation is all visible through the turn indicators. On the front charge indicator, on the Ionic 5, it was a, a vertical charge integrator, or vertically integrated charge indicator here. And here, they've put it across the bottom. I really, I don't care for this as much. I think it looks a little bit out of place here. It looked very nice as a vertical strip in the 5. But anyway, it is at least integrated and, and sharing that pixelated little cubes theme. Coming around the side, it's a lot more, I think, subtle, a, a lot more understated than what the Ionic 5 was. The Ionic 5 was really busy on the side. The wheels, I didn't care for at all. They were very busy, very heavy, super heavy wheels. These wheels, uh, it still has the um, aerodynamic features in them. They're cast aluminum, so they're still going to be heavy, but I think they're a much nicer um, styling package than what was on the 5. On the 5, they had a lot of busyness right in this area. They've cleaned it up. It's a super simple silver panel, and it's um, the whole shape of this vehicle is very reminiscent of the Mercedes CLS when you take a look at it from, from this viewpoint. Um, here's more of the integration of that pixelated pattern that you see on all of them. So the, this is the turn lights, the turn indicators here. Something that they didn't do, and I'll pull a cover from, uh, from the 5 to show you here. Let's see, where do we have it? So I'm going to pull a cover from the Ionic 5 here, and you can see, if you take a look, based on the perforation patterns here, they've not perforated around the, the pixel design. So that was a super simple way to give a styling element to this perforated cover. And then up here, again, no, no impressions, no paint, no anything. It's just uh, a thermal form textured pattern that goes with the pixelated styling. So it's a very subtle carryover of the, the pixelation styling theme into the seats, uh, which they did not do in this vehicle. So if you take a look at the trim here, there's no indication of the exterior little squares, the little, the little pixel styling. It's just one single completely perforated panel. Something you will notice here is that they've added this color band and it's, it goes from orange with a couple of little crossover um, color bands here to like a, I don't know, a periwinkle blue. And Something that surprises me about this is normally when you stitch in a welt like this, that's what this little bead is called, is a welt. Normally it's all one color simply because it'll come on a roll and you just keep spooling that off and you stitch it right in as you're sewing your seat. This one they would have had to identify the center, tack it, and, and then stitch the piece specifically aligned in here. So this each one of these is either a segment in a roll that's color pattern with a repeat or or it's an individual piece that has this color all by itself so that's a surprise to me that they would do something like that uh, also surprising is if you look at the orange and the blue here and then you look at the colors in in the vehicle as we received it as this as a press demo vehicle those are pink and purple and one of my colleagues, you know him well, Carl commented that it looks an awful lot like a hip 80s apartment. So the actual speaker area you can probably see is, is right here. So this is your speaker surface. And then they've just carried smoothly that perforated surface across this whole panel. Uh, something you will note, very different, um, kind of mini-esque, there are no window switches on the door panel. 
So you look, the, I know on, I think it was, gosh, I think it was the expedition, they had window switches up on this, this top surface here and they've had them here, but this is completely clean. The only front window switches are in the center console over there. So that eliminates some wiring, some switch banks, and it allows the door surface to be extremely clean. Something else that you'll see here is that this is all plastic, which I was a little bit disappointed with, considering this is almost $58,000 for the limited vehicle. I would expect some of this to be fabric. This is a very thin, soft touch wrapped surface. And then here again, this is all plastic. And these are all really different colors. So this kind of, I guess, matches here. But this is different color, this is different color. So that, that part didn't excite me as much. Um, so going back to the seats, um, what you see here is something that you couldn't do if this was actual animal leather. And I'm guessing here, because I haven't torn this down to look at the backside, but they've given the seat some seam or stitch character without actually doing any stitching. This appears to be a heat stake, because if you look, there's, there's no actual stitching here, but it gives it a, a sewn cushion, quilted cushion kind of look without having the actual stitching. Everywhere else, um, it is what they call h tex leatherette. So it is a vegan leather, which is really uh, polyvinyl chloride with their proprietary additives, a surface coat, a textile backing, just to make it seem like leather without actually killing anything. Um, so in doing that, this, this does have a very nice leatherette feel. I mean, you can tell that it's not leather, but it is a fairly nice feel. On the back, I was kind of surprised. Their material utilization has got to be pretty bad on this. If you look at the seat back, and I'll get out of the way so that uh, you can get the camera in there, this is one solid piece with a huge cutout in the middle. So I would assume that they're taking some of these other pieces and nesting them in here, but still that's an unusual way to do that. Normally that would be broken with a seam in the corner so that you could get a better material utilization here. Something that was nice in the Ionic 5 that they've carried through to this is they've included the pass-through on the console. If you look here, it's a, it's a very nice pass through. This is a great space if you wanted to put something, uh, a bag, a purse, uh, a Kleenex box, anything. It's here. It's not going to slide either way on that nice flat floor because it's captured within this tray. Um, something unique is that the 12 volt outlet is way up underneath here. So way down underneath here is where that what you would call a cigarette lighter 12 volt outlet is. So that's kind of in an awkward location. Um, something you see right away in here that's kind of unusual to me, everybody else puts their logo right here. There's no logo on the center of the steering wheel. Um, so I guess you know what you're sitting in, but here instead, and I, I like this idea, this is actually um, another state of charge indicator. Again, those little squares, they're a little pixelated design, uh, but there's, there's four lights here for your state of charge indication, which unusual just because that's normally where your logo goes. Um, they've got the flat bottom steering wheel that's nice for clearance with this with the flat bottom here um, So it's it's got a good feel to it uh, The visors are fabric which It would be great if they had the same like a even a vinyl or a leatherette up here simply because You touch this a lot. You know, you're always if you're putting it up and down driving into the Sun like I do uh, This is going to become a dirty surface pretty quickly so um, again, like on the five, their light is behind the, the, the visor, but switch actuated. So that's a cost savings because normally you would have to route wires here and then route them into the headrest through um, the attachment arm. And by doing it this way, you don't have to do that. Um, that's a cost savings. And the slide mirror, um, Normally, I would think, well, sliding it open would turn on lights, so I'm not quite sure why they have a, a slide feature there. Maybe just to, I don't know, keep the mirror clean, but the slide seems somewhat irrelevant when you don't have a light that turns on with that switch. Um, otherwise, clean execution up here. The console is just beautiful. Uh, something you'll notice on this dash area is that they've kind of mirrored this 
styling with these wings. And these wings deflect your uh, side window defoggers here, or demisters. So these are kind of guided by this, so it only will blow on the window when you have that shut. Uh, something else another one of my colleagues noted, um, Jordan, is that this surface now takes away any continuity issues you might have between the dash and the door panel when the door panel closes because this is a like a, a knife edge clean break from this surface here. So there's no dissimilar lines or, or materials that you have to worry about there. Here you have a lot more of that pixelation look. And coming around the back of the vehicle, the side kind of looks Mercedes CLS-ish. The back really makes me think Porsche. I mean, it's, it's sort of like duck tail, whale tail on the back, and just the contours feel very Porsche-like. Uh, and, and this right here is, is definitely a pull from that. So they've got the chimsel down low here. This is their, their high mount rear stop lamp right here. And again, they've used that technique where the polycarbonate surface is smooth and they haven't had to add any um, separate decals or LEDs or anything to, to give it definition. So the texture is, on, is just stamped or print, uh, injection molded onto the back of this piece of plastic. So you can see all those little textured squares just molded right in. So you pay for it once in the tool and then you forever have your styling there. Um, so here again, you've got ribs, uh, just added character to the back once, you know, paid once in styling. And then down a little bit lower on the back bumper, here we have what looks like uh, an aerodynamics assist feature. Probably gives you a little bit of turbulence just coming around this curve. Same thing up in the light here. So it's kind of a character feature, but it looks more like it's an aerodynamic ad. So looking at the trim in the trunk, um, first, a lot of space, nice space. Uh, they've, here, they have gone insanely cheaply. Uh, I would like to say inexpensive, but it feels a little cheap. Um, but it is super lightweight. I mean, I can carry this little panel here. You can put it wherever you want. It's, it's a super lightweight item. This is a corrugated plastic. Let's see if I can give you a better image of that. Probably right up here. So it's just like, you know, when you were a kid and you were making some science fair project, there were those coral plast panels. And that's what this is very similar to, obviously a different texture, but it's just like a coral plast panel. Um, but then the thing is, is they've had to add all of these extra stick-on adhesive foam patches and, and this padded fabric patch to this to keep everything from rattling to, to secure this within the tray. Um, so I'm not quite sure if this will be a savings because you have that super thin, inexpensive coroplast panel with a little bit of, of you know, felt on top of it, but then you have to add all these extra features to get the, what you want to, in terms of sound deadening and security. Um, now, some of the things that they did that are great ideas back here are, if you look, as you seat this panel in, you set it down and this piece has molded in retention features right here. And that piece just sets onto those. There's no, there's no latching, but it's very secure. And then there's no hinges up here. So it's just a simple lift and remove. And when you set it back in, it just sets back in very smoothly into the trunk. Uh, something else that's a very wise and inexpensive execution of a, of a quarter panel window feature is these little panels here. So they had to have access for the, the lights, the wiring, etc. So you do need the window back there. But then if you look, this is just a super simple uh, polypropylene back and polyethylene front that has these tabs that tuck in. So there's no fasteners, no screws, no anything that you have to move to put this in place. It just snaps right in place. So easy to remove, easy to put in place, and a super inexpensive component back in place. 
So right there, that's our uh, one shoe glove box. It's actually a lot of space in the glove box. And in the door, they have a great spot to put your sunglasses. So as you close it, they're gonna stay right there um, if you want pencils or something. So that's a really nice feature to have that separate tray in there. And then this spot, this might have been wasted space, but uh, it looks like it probably has the other side of the mechanism. So if you look here, this space is actually for the handle. So with this space occupied, I think they did a great job of utilizing this space closer to the hinge. And then that is a really large glove box. Can actually fit things into that. When I first looked here, I thought, you know, I don't like that that shark fin is black on my white vehicle. Yeah, this is a styling feature back here, the, the tail, but you know, your shark fin is just a radio necessity. If you wanna have signal, you need to have that on the outside of the vehicle because the metal interferes with transmission. But Armin pointed out that if you take a look, this is actually translucent. So that is uh, like a black or smoked out polycarbonate. And if you wanna see the tech that's inside, you can right through the back of that shark fin. So I can give you a better shot if you want later, but that's, that's a pretty slick way to do that. Just seeing all of the tech that's inside of that. That gives them an excuse to not have it body color. So let's come up to the, to the door on this side where it's a little bit easier without the steering wheel in the way for me to chat about it. Uh, so something that, they, that I like that they've done here is that they have a very smooth, complete pocket front to back. Uh, and you can grab anywhere on that as your, as your door handle. It's got a little grip space in the back here. Uh, very, very nice, convenient. You can grab at any level. And it just looks so clean without the, the window switch bezel and with just one clean flat surface in this entire pocket closed. I, I really like that a lot. Um, plenty of room here too for whatever you want to put down here in that translucent panel. So here, this, I'm not sure if this is an injection molded and uh, molded in color piece or if they actually painted this. It's got an odd texture if you want to come in a little closer on that. So this definitely molded in color. This has an odd feel to it. It almost feels painted. So if this was uh, our teardown vehicle, I would definitely scrape that to see what they did there. Um, but it, it feels painted to match this color. So that, I'm not sure why they did. Um, Another example of the same technique that they've been using carried across right here. And I think this is just beautiful. Maybe I can use the light to illuminate that again. Um, as you're looking at this surface, it looks rippled, but it's actually completely smooth. This, this whole surface is just very smooth. It'll stay clean. Um, but they've used that backside molding and painting technique to give it a really nice texture that kind of gives you the feel of, of the air flow out of these vents. Um, the vents, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like Tesla. They wanted to say there's one smooth vent across the front, but there are actually discrete vents right here. Um, you cannot see, they're way back in there, those vertical louvers, so they did tuck them way back. Um, but it's a, it's a nice clean execution, nice reflection of the um, ambient lighting line here too. All in all, the console is very clean and pretty. Very BMW here, very Mercedes here. Um, kind of wonder how much of these cues came through the onboarding decades ago of Albert Bierman and Peter Schreier from uh, BMW and VW Audi, respectively. Um, I like it. I, I like it. They've come a long way. Kia has. Hyundai, Kia. So stepping to the back seats, they did a similar thing on the Ionic and on the other Kia vehicles. They've got nice little handholds here that you can get your fingers tucked in behind that, that pocket. It's a, a plastic surface, limits your amount of leatherette, it stays clean. Um, the floor, there's, there's so much space back here. There's a lot of room. I don't feel at all crowded. I think it's a little less than what was in the Ionic 5, 
but there's still a huge amount of space back here. And with the with this, the front seat there where I would be comfortable driving, I'm granted I'm not that tall, um, there's still an enormous amount of legroom back here. And then those same styling cues carried from the front to the back. You will see that because the rear seat occupants do not have access to a center console, they do have the, um, the window switches in the door here. So that's a difference from the front. But again, the wrapped, very thin, extremely thin soft touch. So this is wrapped in soft touch, unlike the center console, which had no soft touch, but it's very, very thin. You can barely see that I'm pressing in here. Um, their lines are all clean. They're, the way they've done this, they've got very clean joints. I don't see any bulges, ripples, even though this is an early vehicle, which is a testament to their ability to cleanly trim vehicles. Uh, the speaker is actually down here, which is kind of amusing, within this plastic injection molded piece. And this is simply styling to match the front seat. So the speaker in the front is behind this panel, but in the rear seat, it's, it's down here. You can see the circle where the speaker holes are. Uh, in the center of the rear seat here, you have a nice fold down armrest. Sometimes there's carpet back here. This is simply a plastic panel. You can hear me scratching on it. And then what they've done to prevent any rattling is there's a, a rubber bumper right here. Rather than having a piece of, of carpet here, they've kept it matching the colors, which I like very much. And this will stay clean. Um, you can clean this plastic surface easily. So normally it might be a, a black carpeted surface back here or gray, but uh, I like what they've done with this little rubber bumper, which then stops any rattle that you might have here. Um, oh, another feature that they have that I haven't seen a lot. Uh, you might want to look through the back window at the package shelf. The child seat latch locations are covered with a nice little flip panel. So this will stay clean and hidden unless you're actually using it. So I haven't seen that a lot, and that's a really nice feature. Um, similarly, they, they have the belt come out of a nice clean hole here. So I like that those are closed when they're not being utilized. The carpet mats that are here are an added feature that I think it was a $400 option. You'll have to check on that. Put a little number on the bottom of the screen. They don't match the vehicle color. Um, they match the, the sill trim, but not the vehicle carpet color, which maybe that's an advantage if you want to have dark uh, accessory mats so that when you're in the mud or whatever, that doesn't show up. It just surprised me because normally when you get the extra mats, they do match the color of your interior carpet so that it doesn't look different. It doesn't look like an accessory mat. Um, other than that, um, I don't have a lot more to say. Uh, this is a very nice vehicle. The styling cues are very much Mercedes, um, Porsche, a little bit of BMW. But all in all, it's a very sharp looking vehicle, much more understated and more sedate, I think, than what the Ionic 5 was, which was kind of an out there, kitschy look to the outside. So thank you. Thank you all for watching Monroe Live. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and tell your friends that we have great content. Thanks, everybody.